in today's tutorial. Deepkin, scales, dry brushing, oil washes, all rolled into one. All of those have been heavily requested. This turned out amazingly, super easy. I've got some amazing tips, stick around for how to remove mistakes, which just involves being a little bit patient, using varnishes to your advantage, and literally wipe them off with a thumb in the end. And um, it's, it's impossible not to look at that. Look at it, look how striking it is. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so we have our Corax white, which is obviously not white at all. Prime Turl, I have done that over Chaos Black Base. Uh, that's just because it's kind of what I'm used to, but I, I do want the recesses to be a little bit lighter, which is why I'm not worried about it getting in right in the nooks and crannies. On my desk, I have a tablet with a picture of a turtle. That is gonna be my source of inspiration and is gonna keep me on track throughout this process, so let's see how it goes. I'm not quite sure how to go about texturing these scales in an organized fashion, so I think we're gonna to have to do a little bit of back or forth with keeping those white background areas white. What I'm gonna be doing is using the texture of the model to hopefully just pick up the raised areas. So I've got Scrag Brown, Doom Ball Brown, and Werber is Red on my palette and a bit of Vallejo 950 Black, which will probably come into it in a little bit. And I'm gonna be using these to hopefully get in that lovely kind of warmth to the scales that turtles often have. The ready brown is going to be really important for that. So I'm just going to start by seeing how this model is for just painting raised details, which seems to be fairly good, but it is going to matter which way I'm painting the scales. So I want to be going across the gaps to leave them, not down them, because that will fill them in. So straight away, I'm definitely going to have to be doing some kind of after work here. I'm going to build up a texture of a light brown all over and then from there we'll work our way towards the darker colours because it's much easier to do that in terms of getting the colours down on the model than starting black and then trying to somehow magic up really deep browns. We'd end up using thick paint. I would say that's been semi-successful. It's quite hard to leave uh, these gaps, I think uh, I shouldn't have used an extra large, I should have used a larger, in fact even a medium, because the moment I jumped to the small to get the detailed uh, sections in, my life got significantly easier. Now I've quickly airbrushed the lower half of it brown, I'm not going to be putting too much time into the lower half because this model is going to be seen from above and I'm after a speed job, so we're kind of committing to that wholesale. The next step is to start involving some more interesting colours in these scales, now what I want to do is reflect the patterns of the natural turtle, also having them darker at the top and lighter at the bottom with some type of detail in there. So that's going to involve a little bit of stippling and kind of uh, wizardry. I'm going to be using the small for most of this, I expect. I may jump to medium, but it's going to be a lot of stippling just going from one colour to another. So to show that roughly on one scale, let's start from our lightest brown. I'm going to be working pretty quick here. Go to the word bearers. Doom Ball and a little bit of black. Obviously that black is a significant step up in colour. But this is the type of effect that even if it doesn't look incredible on one, repeated over the entire model should actually work wonders. So I'm going to pop on a time lapse and put in as much time as is needed to get that effect on all the top scales. I'm not going to be doing it on the side scales, but something like that I'm going to endeavour to get on every single one of the scales on the back of the model because that is the kind of the money shot is this model from above from 45 degrees. Okay, so I'd like to show you the method that I've kind of settled on for doing the scales. Um, I've actually got out the extra small brush here and I'm using that for smudging black into the top. 
Um, now I might be tweaking this a little bit by doing the opposite and highlighting it from the bottom of the orange, but I'll show you what I've worked out so far because I think it's quite an efficient way of doing things. So we're using wet on wet here as a principle. That means that we're working with paint that hasn't had time to dry yet. And as a result, you can kind of squeak in a couple of steps of smushy blending that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So I start off with the orange and I go all the way to the top using the word bear as red. Now it's very important to make sure that the top of the scale is wet. Now go in quick with the black, change brush, and I do an initial, don't worry if any of this isn't perfect by the way, that's, that's not the idea of the technique, we're not going for flawless perfection, we're going for something that looks organic, so I put in initial black line and then I push upwards into that line with the extra small blending it into the already wet paint that's there. And that is it, essentially. So I might come in and do some orange dipping at the bottom once this is done, but overall, I think that effect is, for the time, uh, pretty good, and it's also really enjoyable. It's not taking too long at all, so I'm gonna finish off the scales on the top of this, and then we'll work out about tweaking it. All right, actually, I've decided that for a change, I'm after maximum contrast. So I've jumped to a, a smaller extra small, and by that, I mean one that I've used a lot, so the end has been worn down. And this is because I want just a, a little bit less flex in the bristles. So this is kind of a comparison with um, just like I would use Series M for freehand or um, chipping or something like that for detail work. I've chosen a shorter, older, more worn down brush. And this is more suited to stippling and less suited to kind of smushing blendy stuff. So being careful not to make things look dry use my dampening pad to dilute it for that but I've got a little bit of troll slayer and I've actually got some uriel yellow that I can mix in with it as well towards the very tip so for a change everything I'm doing towards the bottom of these scales is kind of geared towards contrast always all about the contrast so this all over let's see if we can really ramp things up All right, so we are looking pretty good, especially for the time that we've put into that so far. Uh, checking out our turtle's arms, <laughs> fins, you know, whichever. Um, basically, as we get to the extremities, there's a lot less, less depth to the scales and they're, they're more dark on a very light-skinned background. So I'm gonna be doing less subtlety here. I'll be sticking with the small and I'll kind of be buffing these up, although I'm gonna be buffing them towards um, dark, deep, orangey, browny, black. Done a little bit of testing ripped my poor fishy's fins off. And what we're gonna be doing is hitting all of this with a coat of monitor and varnish just to keep it safe. And then doing some fancy weathering stages to get the white in the recesses. So we're gonna be mixing up an oil wash. Uh, now, whatever thinner you have regionally, um, mineral spirits, white spirits, odorless spirits um, are great. So we varnished it just to protect our layer that we've got underneath and um, that might not be strictly necessary, but you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I have an oil paint here. You could use a pre-mixed uh, white wash though. I have this one that I thought maybe would be uh, somewhat comparable. It's just an off-white. Um, this is too white, so I've actually used, which is getting some cleaning, a very sad brush that's had far too much abuse. So the browns and the yellows that are kind of in these bristles have gone into the paint here. Just diluting it. And then over our protection of purity seal, we don't need to worry about any mishaps or anything like that. And it should make removals far easier. I'm gonna be using cotton buds or Q-tips if you're American. And uh, that's gonna be kind of our precision tool for this. So I'll mix this up to an appropriate thickness, which is probably skimmed milk. I know it's an old cliche, but that's what we're aiming for. And then I'm gonna to swap to a precision brush and we'll see how this goes. All right, so I've dropped down to a size one. Now this is one that has had a fairly hard life, but still has some good shape to it, because it is important to have a point for this job. So hopefully this shows up nicely on camera. I am just following the recesses. Which is fiddly on the smaller parts, but as soon as we get to the big parts, should be way more forgiving. Okay, so we are working really well. I have made a discovery. So I've got my method down. 
basically what I need to do is use the delicate brush with a nice point. Take care, but it actually goes really, really quick. So this fin was actually dry brushed up through um, exactly the same colors that are on the top scales. So a little bit through brown and then adding black. Hopefully that shows up. Um, it looks a little bit shiny over with a purity seal monitoring varnish over it a few years behind there, Byron. And um, I'm down, that, that is good, that is great. Uh, once the details, like the leather and the whatever it is, metallics, have been done, that's awesome. I'm, um, I'm super happy with that. So the rest of the fins will be dry brushed in that way and then I'll dot them carefully. What I did want to show you though is how this works on the big scales because this is, this is absolute hobby cheating. Look at that. That should be illegal. So much contrast, so much, um, if you make a mistake, you don't have to worry about it. You can just wipe it off. Um, one thing to be wary of is the reason this works is because there's super low surface tension on oil paint. So that does mean it will run downwards. So don't put down, put down something that is the minimum thickness you can get away with on the model and just be aware that it might start running downwards. So um, I'm going to work fairly lightly and carefully. This might look like a delicate job, but Honestly, for the time that I'm putting in and how difficult it is to make a mistake and how much contrast I'm getting, this is an absolute bargain of a time investment. So I'm gonna go all over the piece like this, do some dry brushing, bring those up, and then we're pretty much gonna be there. We're gonna be onto the detailing stage. So for bringing our guys' fins up to scratch, I've got Troll Slayer here. It's got a little bit of our previous browns in it. I'm taking less care because I now know that I can place my white as easily as I need to. Make sure that you're going in as soft as possible. You can do that by using more of your previous stages, by using your dampening pad, by removing, or as I've just done, by doing all three. What this allows me to do is I can put down this stage of black, which is the soft black, and then still available to me afterwards. I've got a hard black, which means that I can highlight my black. And it's often quite difficult to find out how to highlight your black on anything because, I mean, what, what's left after black? So softening your first layer of black is a really good way to be able to achieve that. So it's done at this stage, I'm just gonna be hitting the metallics with some gold and then I'm gonna use a turquoisey wash because we haven't actually got any kind of sea vibes going on. I know it's Turtle, he's pretty sea ready, but um, I want some kind of ocean colors in there and I'll pick out teeth and barnacles and aside from a dry brush, which I'm about to do now, that is probably it. They're just gonna be flat base coat wash affairs and I'll do dry brushing on the scales to pick out some of the gorgeous detail which we have ignored so far. Okay, so regarding these scales, I'm just gonna be hopping straight to orange pretty softly. I've got some ice yellow there if needed, but essentially I just wanna make sure that the gorgeous kind of um, lifelike texture on these doesn't get obscured or rather than obscured, uh, isn't missed out. So really careful, gentle buffing, highlighting. I don't want this getting in the recesses whatsoever. And I've picked a really bright color because it should, fingers crossed, allow me to do this without any real need for pressure. It's such a step up in color that it should be pretty obvious. There we go, that's working wonders. So that lovely texture we've got there on the scales We've still got the shininess from the varnish actually, which is kind of interesting, but that lovely texture on the scales hasn't been obscured and that's what we were after there. So I want to show you a nice way to deal with mistakes. I had a real kind of messy, smushy bit here where I'd literally thumb printed and kind of ruined this section. I've let it dry. I didn't try to fix it when it happened. And then just with a wetted finger, because of the varnish layer, we can literally just gently and perfectly buff away our mistake. So anywhere, I'm trying to find another area of uh, kind of sloppy mishaps now. Anywhere where that's happened, because of that varnish layer, 
we've made it pretty easy for stuff to exit. So I'm going to be doing this all around the model just to clean up those little kind of imperceptible slips or bits where stuff has kind of worked its way up the edge of scales, particularly on the flat fins. And that is going to make it look like I was far, far more accurate than I actually was. This is magic. This is super forgiving. And because we've let it dry, we're just going to pick it up off the recesses. If we didn't let it dry, we would go in and we kind of mop up the white stuff and then we spooge it all over the scales, which is not what we want whatsoever. So Mr. Turtle is drying next to the radiator. I really don't particularly like these visually, so I'm working out what I'm going to do, and I think it's a pretty easy one. I can just hide it inside a pillar, magic. So I'm going to uh, drill through this and then build up a little bit of a base, do something oceany on that, and that will showcase the model beautifully. So, final paint job speaks for itself. Really, really pleased with that. This was kind of a learn on the job thing, which a lot, of, a lot of our tutorials are. That's why you get to see me making mistakes. I pick up the paint, I've got an objective in mind and I try and get there. And that is one of the best parts of our hobby. You are gonna make mistakes on the way. Just be prepared to work with them. As long as you've not put on like paint that's this thick, pretty much anything in this hobby can be fixed. So it took me three or four goes to get the, the oil wash right and then it took me half the model to get the dilution right. But at the end of it, you can barely tell the difference between the bits here that didn't work, the bits here that did work, and the bits in the middle where I was kind of learning. It's practically imperceptible. It just stands out, it's super striking, looks really good. Touch on the base quickly, put the ripples in the edge, nice way with green stuff to kind of work with a material that can dry underneath layers of PVA and stuff like that. Speed was of the essence with this, so I just wanted to bash something out to help showcase it. Um, when you do have the models like this, not that it's anything to do with painting, but when mounting stuff, rather than mounting it flat, if you are gonna glue this, obviously if it's, if it's just pushed on, it really doesn't matter. But rather than mounting it flat, imagine how it would be if it was moving and just like tilting a Space Marine's head, having something slightly off angle leaning forwards, whatever it is, goes a really, really long way to making it look more animated, more real, and, um, you know, more leviathan -y in the case of this one. Super pleased with this. Still kind of wish that I'd done the scales turquoise. I think that would look absolutely amazing, especially against the yellow sand. But yeah, really, really pleased. If you have any questions, comments, um, suggestions, um, anything like that would be absolutely amazing. We are smashing away with the lockdown army stuff, but um, you know, the painting's gonna be quite hard on this one. I actually wanted to start out with this being grim dark as a test and it just ended up looking exactly like a turtle. Nothing grim or dark about it. I'd like to cover it in blood, but I don't know how, quite how that would work with the fact that it's meant to be underwater. Suggestions below help me out. Any excuse for Tammy clear red and blood effects is a good one in my book. So there is the model again. Super pleased with it. Really, really good fun. I would absolutely recommend this. Uh, any questions at all so I can help you out with making it applicable to your army. Pop them below. Please like, comment and subscribe. Help support the channel and I'll see you in the next video.